Hey, Storytime grown-ups. How are you doing? Hope you're doing okay, doing your preschool Storytime extensions at home. I hope it's going pretty well. If you haven't watched one before, my name is Miss Lisa. I get to do all the story times at Worthington Park Library. And for today, we're going to be talking about food. Because that was our theme in story time this week. If you haven't already watched it, Miss Karen did a lovely story time of all about food. So you can go back and watch that with your kiddo first. And then you can try some of these fun extension ideas. All right, the first idea I had... First of all, I love Food Week. It's lots of fun. There's so many great things you can do with it, but Food Week, I think, is even more fun at home because I could do a lot of it with it here in the library, but there's so many more options that you can do at home because you know what food allergies you have. You already have a lot probably in your kitchen that you can work with, so it's extra fun, I think, at home. The first idea I had is that you could do a veggie stamping art project and for that you would cut up vegetables and then stamp them into a little bit of paint and then put them on the piece of paper. And it's good to use a pretty thick paper because it's a fair amount of paint but you can also water down the different colors too. I didn't bring any examples with me today, I'm sorry for that one, um, but peppers make fantastic stamps. Um, an onion, if you cut it and leave it out overnight, all those rings will separate a little bit and you can use it. And with both of those, you can just cut off the little bit that you used for stamp that got paint on it and you can still use the rest of it for food, which is, I think, a nice advantage. Um, same with celery makes a fantastic stamp. That's why I drew some not great celery in my pictures. Um, because if you cut the whole thing across at the, toward the bottom of the celery, like that last, you know, inch that you don't really use, you can stamp the whole thing in and it looks like a rose. It's really pretty. Um, so I love using the veggie stamps. It's such a fun way to, to explore some vegetables that maybe your child doesn't eat regularly. Um, rolling corn is lots of fun if you have a whole corn kernel. Okra makes beautiful stamps, so pretty. Um, so get creative. If you have things that are about to go bad at your house, you can try using those. Um, lots of fun. I love doing veggie stamping. The next idea I have is that you can play restaurants at your house. If you don't have a play kitchen, you can always repurpose some boxes. We did this last year here in the library. I turned one box into a refrigerator. I turned one box into an oven and a stove. It took me a grand total of about five minutes because I just grabbed a Sharpie and drew some things on them. I did not put a lot of effort in. The kids played with it for a very long time. Lots of fun. Um, if you have play food, it makes it a little bit more fun, but if you have other things that you can use as pretend food, that works well. Um, when we play restaurant, I like to have the kids try to write up a menu so that they're practicing those writing skills. Um, they can make a shopping list of what they would need to buy. They can go play grocery store too, if you have the stuff for that. Um, and then they're working on those social skills too, when they are, because they probably don't remember eating in a restaurant because it's been a while. Um, but you can practice what you would do when you go to a restaurant and things like that. They can be the chef or they can be the person coming into the restaurant. You can trade off jobs, lots of fun. The next idea I had sounds like it's related um, box building or recycled building, but it's not. We're gonna talk about um, the idea of building and creating things with the recycling from your kitchen. So if you use any prepackaged foods, you can use the boxes and do some fun building activities like with that. Um, if you wanted to get real fancy, you could cover the boxes with like pretty papers. Um, if you have cans that are clean, you do need to be careful of the sharp edges on cans, but you could build a lot of things with those as building blocks. Um, the next idea I had is that you can have your child be your chef's assistant. Um, my kids do like to be in the kitchen a lot. There's a lot of times that at least one of them is underfoot. I mean, helping. Um, so you can have your child help you write up the menu for the week or do the, if you're doing online grocery shopping, they can sit with you and help do the grocery shopping. Um, and they can help plan out what you were going to have. And you could talk about like trying to come up with 
good nutritious meals that are pretty balanced um, and how it would be fun to buy entirely cookies and candy, but that's not going to be best for our bellies. So you can um, have them help you plan that out and then incorporate them in your cooking. So when we're cooking, we're using a lot of our skills. We're using some reading. If we're following a new recipe, we are using measurement and fractions. So there is a lot of math and science and reading skills that we use every time we cook together. So cooking together is a really, I know it's not always super fun, but it's a really fantastic way to skill build. Um, and we all want children who turn into adults that, you know, can go out and be productive, right? So I like incorporating some of that now. Um, another fun option is that if you bring home some cookbooks and peruse them together and you can pick out some things that they want to make. Um, in the week. The next idea I had is that if you have any food magazines laying around or even just like if you get magazines from the grocery store, not magazines, flyers. If you get flyers from the grocery store and things like that, you can have your child cut them up, cut out the pictures, and you can make a food sort together. So we did um, happy belly versus treat ideas. So things that we can have almost any time versus things that we really should just have on occasion. Um, but you could also do it um, if you have read, nope, never, not for me. It's a book all about trying new foods. And in that book, at the very end, they make a big chart of all the new foods she has tried. And you can put them on the, yep, tried it and liked it, or the, nope, not for me but at least they tried it. So you could do the same thing with, um, with magazine pictures. If you don't have anything lying around that you can cut up and use for that, you can also draw things on either side. Um, you could do like a fruit and veggie sort. You could make um, a, trying to do like a my plate idea where you sort it all into the, what category it would fit in for food. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this idea. Hopefully that gives you a couple. Um, and then my last idea is that you can use your birthday cupcakes that we made way back forever ago. Um, toward the beginning of this session, we talked about during All About Me Week making a birthday cupcake Play-Doh. So you can get out your Play-Doh. Um, if you have any silicone cupcake liners or just paper cupcake liners, you can get those out. I always love including a pair of kind of crummy scissors when we're doing Play-Doh. Um, but you could also use a butter knife if it's pretty soft. You can get out candles if you have candles, and then we're working on some math skills as well. Um, and then I think we got out pom-poms last time too in my house, um, so that they could use those as the cherries on top or the sprinkles. I can't remember where they ended up with those, but that is a fun activity. It takes a little bit of time to get it set up, but it should buy you a good chunk of time on the flip side. So, all right, I think that's all I have for you today. That's actually all I have for you for this story time session. We are done after this week. We take a little bit of a break and we come back in January. So we're gonna be doing that even though we're doing virtual story times. And I know that that's kind of a big long gap, but if you want, you can go back and you can watch some old favorites. We, we're keeping all of them on the channel for right now. So you can go back and watch other story times that you really enjoyed. Or if you missed a couple, you can go back and watch them now. The other thing that I really wanted to make sure I said is thank you, grown-ups. Um, I know that this has not been the easiest time for all of us. But I really appreciate the feedback that we've gotten about the story times and doing them virtually. I really hope that they have been helpful to you in some way. And I want you to know that we miss you like crazy kids and grown-ups. Um, please give your kiddos a squeeze for us. And hopefully we will see you not too long into 2021. All right. I'll talk to you later.